Ein einziger genau ja. Lin ne sag na si wiswin, si go na no ka sik, da nisch na be wiswin. Kuri isch gönne gönnen, du und du se, in chike in da mamaya yan nunga. Hello everybody, my name is, um, my English name is Lin. My uh, Soto Anishinaabe name is Hummingbird. I'm from Cody Reserve. I come from Cody Reserve and I'm happy to be here today. Um, today I want to talk a bit about uh, storytelling, uh, Soto Anishinaabe storytelling and a bit about culture and language. Culture, language and storytelling go together. You can't separate them. Um, storytelling is not only about stories, they also include our way of life, which is our culture, uh, and they include our language. So culture and language come, go hand in hand with storytelling. The storytellers were our grandparents, and those are the ones that passed on stories orally. Parents were also storytellers. It was um, the parents' responsibility to teach the young. And they did it through storytelling and to teach them how to be a member of society, of the community, to uh, be a, uh, a, a proud member of the community. Stories were our education. Um, the old ones were the educators. They were the ones that were most knowledgeable about our life. So they were the ones that told the stories. They, they knew about the tribal histories. They knew about the customs, the beliefs, the, the ceremonies, the traditions. And they know most of the stories and the legends. So stories were more of, um, of an entertainment. They contain the people's history, philosophy, spiritual belief system, and also people's ideology. And ideology is a body of ideas and beliefs within a group or a nation. In Soto, we have uh, various genres of stories. We have um, ancestor stories or legends, what we call Atsu Kewanan. We also have elder counseling stories where the elders counsel the young people. And those ones were Che Nishnape Kaki Kewanan. Um, we have tall tales, jokes, and humorous stories for entertainment. We also have historical stories or stories from long ago, and these are the ones that tell us how we got to certain places or where we come from. And these ones are Kete uh, We have children's stories, Apinochi Te we have horror stories, Zegachamonan. We also have the evil cannibalistic monster and little people stories. So those are the genres, genres of stories that we have. And the logic or the reason for, for storytelling was to explain the wonders of nature and the mysteries of life and the universe. Also to teach morals, values, beliefs, as well as customs and ceremonies. A lot of our ceremonies have stories on how they came to be. Um, storytelling was also used as a means of social control to teach the children about proper behaviors and taboos and also to fill the long winter nights because everyone was stuck inside in the winter. So there was nothing else to do. There was no TV, nothing. So storytelling was kept for winter. Um, as a means of social control, the Wintago, uh, the Wintago stories, those teach us not to go out of boundaries, to keep within our own, our own um, boundaries. Te uh, they also teach us not to be greedy, not to be excessive, um, to share what we have. Um, we also, they also teach us how certain things came to be, um, how, how nature came to be, 
uh, the story of the owl, how the owl got its name. It was a story my late grandfather told. Um, the owl was just a bird in a tree, and it was the trickster that gave him the name. The trickster was walking one day, and this bird was throwing something on his head, hitting the, the trickster on the head. And the trickster was trying to see who was hitting him, looking up in a tree and asking, who are you? Why are you hitting me? And the bird wouldn't quit. He kept on. So the trickster asked him for a match, a, a duel, a you know, fight. So they started fighting and they were fighting for a long time. And the trickster, Nana Bush, started wringing his neck. And as he heard it crack, then he heard the sound out of the owl, coo coo coo, come out of its, out of its mouth. So when they were done fighting, the Nana Bush, the trickster, told the owl, that's, gonna, that's what you're going to be known as now, Kukukuku, that is your name. And that's what we call the owl today. And he also told the owl that as long as the owl is alive and there's an earth, that the Anishinaabe will be scared of the owl. That when we see the owl, then we know there's, we're going to hear bad news. And that's one of our beliefs today, is that owl is a bearer of bad news. So, so explaining wonders of nature, that's what our stories do. Children are curious, they ask a lot of questions, and this is what our stories did. It also gave um, individual learning to people. You hear a story, there could be 10 of you hearing the same story, but you're on your own after to think of that story and what you got out of it. So that was our teaching method, individual learning. Not everybody may have gotten the same, but they got a teaching out of it. So that, those were teaching tools. Um, the main character, like I said, was Nana Push, and he's known as a trickster. He is a legendary hero or anti-hero. Um, He's not only human, but he's part spirit. His mother was human, and his father was the spirit of the west wind, Ningapian. He was a twin. His mother died at ch childbirth, so his grandmother, Nuku, misraised him. And that's who the trickster is. So these stories not only include his relationship with nature as a whole, but also his relationship with um, the universe, with everything, everything around him. The horror stories involve the evil cannibalistic monster. And that, like I said, he represents excess and greed. And we're taught not to be excessive, not to be hoarders, not to be greedy. The Wintigo also has a cold heart. We're taught not to be cold-hearted. Um, they also teach about the laws of nature and we're a means of social control in behaviors. So knowing that you couldn't step out of boundaries that the Wintago would come and get you, that was a means of social control. So it kept your own laws, your natural laws within your own, your own co little communities. The little people are the dwarfs, the Mimim Gweishawak. They, they, uh, their stories were to teach us beliefs and to teach us how cer certain things came to be. The, um, the little men gave us honey, amu umu, which is for us a natural sweetener and also a blood stopper. If put over a wound, it's, it seals the wound. So it gave us these things that would help us. The little men gave us that. Um, another belief we have with the little men is that if you see a butterfly, then a little man has lost its life, and that's his spirit, is that little butterfly. So those are some of the stuff that the little men gave us. Um, there is a relationship of both Atsukewanan, the ancestor stories or the sacred legends, and the ordinary stories, Atsumoanan. And they're related as a whole within the culture. So those stories relate to each other. 
Um, the legends are the basis for the Soto way of life or the Anishinaabe way of life. Um, the way we see things, the way we live. Um, so it was more than a religion. It was a way of life. Uh, and that was because of the holistic view we had towards um, life. So it, so a way of life, not a religion, a way of life, praying daily, looking after things daily. So that was the way we lived. The legends also explain the creation of the world, um, the flood, the recreation of the world, the origin of people, nature, and the mysteries of the universe. That's what the legends do. They taught us values, beliefs, each story had a moral or a teaching included in it, also with an explanation of how certain things came to be. They also told of legendary heroes and spirits. Um, without, without the stories, you can't have culture because our stories also teach about our culture. So culture is a total way of life. Uh, social control is achieved within the culture through language, beliefs, customs, traditions, stories, and spirituality. Um, all of these are, are the norms of our group, of our people. These are norms. So language and culture are learned. Language is the lifeblood of the culture. They all have to remain. Language cannot survive without culture, without stories. Stories cannot survive without language, without culture. Um, we, we, the Soto, have a circular worldview, the way we see the world. If you look at some people, they see it as a linear, linear. A is birth, B is death, that's it. We have that circular worldview where in the East, life begins. You're a child, then you're a young, you're young uh, youth, then you're an adult, then you're an old person, and your circle is complete. But you go on to another realm, which is the spirit world. So our circle is never complete. You're going to keep going in a circular, circular way. So that's why we say we have a, that circular worldview. Anin anishna pe jekana wapandanga ke how the Anishinaabe view the world, and it's a circular worldview. We refer to the earth as Atsukanake, spirit land. Everything on earth has a spirit. Everything put on earth has a spirit, and we have to sustain a harmonious relationship with that, with everything that was put on earth. <laughs> the number four is symbolic, and it's sacred in most First Nations cultures. It's derived from the four cardinal points or the four directions. They appear in the legends, the ceremonies, the stories, the arts, and the music. And they identify with the four grandfather winds, who in First Nations mythology, we believe they're the ancestors of the human race. So the four grandfathers, Niwin and Mishumsak, those are our four grandfathers. The four that we have are the mitik, which is a tree, um, a sin, which is rock, ishkote, which is fire, and wingskun, which is sweet grass. Those are our four grandfathers. We have the four directions. We have wapanung, east, uzawanung, south, ningapianung, or pangishamung, in the west, and kiwetanung, the north. We have the four stages of life, a pinochi, a child, uskatizi, uh, a youth, inine, ikwe, an adult, man or woman, and kiwatizi, the old people. We have the four seasons, siguan, the spring, nipin, summer, takakin, fall, pipun, winter. We have four aspects of human nature. Ka inamachiwan, emotional. Kiao, your physical. 
Nagan the Wenchigan, intellectual, and Anishnape Tawin, spiritual. We have the four requirements of uh, the cycle of life. Gakanawapanta, protection. Gasamanta, nourishment. Gakikanamaunta, growth. And Kakinakego, wholeness. We have four elements of earth Ishkote, fire. A sin rock, nipe water, and no tin air. We have the four orders of life, a wezewak, animals, a sinik, the rock, kiteganak, plant, and opimatizik, humans. We have four modes of mobility, gapimuptewat, the crawlers or the reptiles, gapagazuat, the swimmers, Kapimisewat, the flyers, and Kapimusewat, the animals and the humans. We have cor four colors and four races of humanity. Utapike Sik, the Asians, and the colors Uzawa and Uzauze, yellow. We have um, Wisakoteo Ninewak, the African American, and the colors there Makoteoze and Makotea, black. Munyao Ninewak, which are Caucasians, the colors there, Wapskize and Wapska, white. We have Anishinaabeg, the First Nations, the color there is Miskoze and Miskwa, red. We have the four animals, Kinyu, the eagle, Wapikanochi, a mouse, Makote Makwa, the black bear, and Wape Miskote Pejeke, the white buffalo. We so those are the four, the four animals, the four seasons, the four directions, the four colors. That is our circular worldview and how we see things. And all of those also have to tie in with the language and with the culture and with the stories. The Soto or the Anishinaabeg were true environmentalists. They were conscious about of the world around them. They knew they were part of the ecosystem and not superior to it. Um, they were related to everything uh, and equal to everything. So the Soto Anishinaabe culture is an earth-based culture. Um, the language, the legends, the stories they all taught this they also taught love and respect for everything around them everything living um, you cannot leave language out of culture and storytelling language is a big part of of um, of the uh, Soto of the Anishinaabe um, the people's worldview is reflected in language and in the belief system uh, people of different cultural backgrounds see the cosmos a little bit differently, and the language also indicates that. A lot of our words are ineffable in English, and they can somewhat be explained, but when you put them into English, it loses its true meaning and intention. That's why language is so important. We have many people that still speak or understand the language and and they know these stories and they have a holistic view towards life once they know the language and the stories. So it's very difficult to maintain a culture without language. So we need the language also. Culture is socially controlled, language, customs, Habits and traditions are all socially controlled within a culture. So all of these all tied together. And that's a little bit information on the Soto Anishinaabe storytelling. And I'm ha I was happy to share with you. Jimmy Gwech, a big thanks. Kinanako Minanim, I'm grateful to you all. Kigawapa Minanim Minawa, I'll see you all again.